How's it going, Security Metrics fans? I'm Noah from the Security Metrics News. I'm a threat hunter here at Security Metrics. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about three projects to get you started in information security or cybersecurity. I'm gonna be referring to both of those though as InfoSec. Let's get into it. In the world of InfoSec right now, everybody wants to get a job. Uh, the entry level job market is just flooded with people who are getting started and trying to learn cybersecurity, information security. So I wanted to share with you guys three projects that you can do for under $100. You can probably do all three together under $100 to get you started in information security, to get you some hands-on experience and develop some skills. So these three projects that we're gonna share with you are all super doable for a beginner and they should teach you a lot. Uh, a lot of skills that'll transfer into your first job. This video is by no means a tutorial on each of these projects. Instead, we'll be talking about each project uh, what it consists of, the outcomes, and the skills that you will develop from completing it. In the description below, we'll be linking to some detailed instructions for each of these three projects so that you can get started. All right, so getting right in, uh, each three of these projects is going to be using a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this isn't a Raspberry Pi that you want to eat. This is a single board computer. So these little computers are awesome for hobbyists. They run between $5 and $100. Uh, they can run Linux. They even have their own version of Linux maintained by the Raspberry Pi Foundation called Raspbian. Uh, there's tons of projects out there, tutorials, uh, add-on boards that can add functionality to your Raspberry Pi. Uh, they're not the most powerful computer, but they get the job done. They're perfect for these three projects we're going to go through. First project is the Pi Hole. So the pie hole is a DNS black hole that's designed to black hole domains you program it with, such as ads. So what that means is that you plug in a Raspberry Pi to your Wi-Fi router, and then when you go to a website, it's going to go to your router, go back to the Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi is going to tell your router if that website exists. So you can program the Raspberry Pi to say ads.samsung.com doesn't exist. That would mean that any ads from that website, ads.samsung.com, aren't going to load on your Wi-Fi network. This takes a lot of configuration, but there's a ton of great uh, resources out there to set up your own Pi hole. It's a great way to clear up your TV from unwanted ads in the menus or uh, removing ads from your internet browser all the way across your network on every single device. This project, the Pi Hole, is going to consist of installing Linux on your Raspberry Pi, installing the packages for the Pi Hole software, configuring a static IP address. So that's going to involve setting up the static IP address on the Raspberry Pi itself and also in your router or firewall settings. Then you're also going to have to manage it. So you can get off the shelf kind of lists of domains, websites, IP addresses that you should block with your Pi Hole, but you're going to have to go in yourself and make changes to this to keep things working and to block new ads that are coming out. Now the outcomes of this project are that you can block any domain on your network. This means you could block adult content, uh, you could block games that you don't want people to be looking at, uh, you could block ads, which is the primary resource for this. This is what I use my pie hole for, blocking the ads on my smart TV. And you can also block malicious websites or IP addresses. So there's a security aspect to that, is that you can use your pie hole to improve your cybersecurity, information security. Now, the skills that you'll develop from setting up your pie hole are whitelisting and blacklisting. That's uh, allowing websites through your pie hole and blocking websites on your pie hole. Uh, DNS, that's domain name system. Uh, networking, DHCP, routing, and obviously Linux, because Linux is going to be running on your pie hole. Now, if you really enjoy your pie hole project and you want to keep going on that, uh, the next steps would be probably maintaining it. Uh, working on the whitelist and blacklist. A more advanced project along the same vein would probably be setting up a firewall, uh, an intrusion detection system, and an intrusion prevention system. Common software that you want to use for that is probably OpenSense, PFSense, and Snort. And then within PFSense, there's a software called PFBlockerNG, and you can use that basically to do everything that your pie hole does. So those are some great next steps, and on to the next project. The next one that we recommend is a honeypot. 
So if you think about Winnie the Pooh or a bear, uh, they like honey, right? And so a pot of honey would be really attractive to them. Well, a honey pot is an attractive ta- uh, is an attractive target for hackers. The honey pot. It looks appealing to them, and then once a hacker tries to hack into your honeypot, it notifies you. It gives you all the data of what kind of attack was performed against it and who performed that attack. These are fairly easy to set up, and they give you really valuable threat data. It's really important in an enterprise or even in your own uh, security at home to know when people are trying to hack into your computers and what kind of attacks they're using. A honeypot consists of installing Linux on your Raspberry Pi, installing the packages for your honeypot. Uh, We recommend uh, Open Canary, and we're going to link to a tutorial on that. And then you're also going to have to configure it and use the data you get from it. The outcomes of this project are going to be that you're learning what hacking attempts look like. This is super valuable if you want to go into a blue team role in information security. Another outcome of the uh, Pi honeypot is that you're going to know when there's a threat actor on your network. You can configure the honeypot to email you or send you a different notification when it detects a hacking attempt, which is super valuable. You're also going to get all this threat data of who's trying to hack into you. That's another thing that's super valuable. The skills that you're going to learn from setting up your own honeypot are networking, uh, different attack types, some log analysis, looking through the logs of these attacks, uh, network security, and obviously Linux. Now, if you really enjoy your Honeypot project and you want to continue down on more projects that are similar to that, we recommend uh, blocking the bad guys that you catch, uh, running a network vulnerability scanner, and maybe using the data that you get from your Honeypot to create your own threat feed. This is a list of known bad actors that is published online. There's tons of them out there by different cybersecurity companies and uh, research institutions. And other people can use that data to block bad guys on their network or vice versa. So that's a really cool project that you can do. And that one, I would say, is probably really impressive. Third project that we have is a Ponigachi. So this might look really familiar to some of you 90s kids out there. Looks just like a Tamagotchi, but this is powered by a Raspberry Pi. So as you can see, there's the connectors on the side of there. There is a Raspberry Pi inside of this little keychain and a screen. And even some of them have fit batteries in there. I wasn't able to, so mine connects to an external battery bank. But a Ponigachi isn't just your cute little friend. It is also a passive Wi-Fi hacker. So this is a little bit of a legal gray area depending on where you live and what you're using your Ponigachi for. But a Ponigachi, as you're walking around, it can detect nearby Wi-Fi networks and kick people off of them. Then when those people try and reconnect to the Wi-Fi automatically, the Ponigachi steps in and it captures the Wi-Fi handshake. That handshake includes a hashed version of the Wi-Fi password, which if you were uh, malicious, you could break that hash and get the password to their Wi-Fi. Uh, You can also add GPS modules to your Ponigachi. Uh, This will allow you to create a map of wireless networks near you. This is commonly referred to as war walking. And there's tons of projects for war walking online that are super cool. The Ponigachi consists of building the device, uh, installing the operating system that comes pre-configured with everything you need, connecting over SSH, and walking, going outside, seeing the sun, breathing the fresh air. You could also uh, crack the hashes that you collect from your Ponigachi. Some outcomes of the Ponigachi is that you will capture Wi-Fi handshakes. Uh, You'll map Wi-Fi in your area, and you'll have a cute little hacking buddy to go everywhere with you. The skills that you're going to develop from this are wireless security, uh, hardware assembly. Uh, My Ponigachi, I 3D printed his case, and I soldered together a bunch of the pieces. It was a really good experience on learning some of that. You'll also learn networking. Um, you'll use SSH to connect to your Ponigachi, super important skill in InfoSec, uh, soldering, 3D printing, I think I already touched on that, and then obviously Linux once again. Now, if you really enjoyed your Ponigachi, uh, playing with them, mapping out Wi-Fi, some next steps would be learning cryptography, learning how hashing algorithms work, uh, hardening your Wi-Fi to prevent someone with a Ponigachi from stealing your handshakes and hacking into your Wi-Fi, uh, advanced Wi-Fi hacking, and using something like a Hack5 Wi-Fi Pineapple to learn other types of Wi-Fi penetration testing and hacking. Now, some other advice about these three projects that we covered on today 
is that um, when you follow the steps for a project, you don't actually learn anything unless you uh, research it. So you could follow all the steps to go through these three projects, but if you're not saying, oh, um, pie hole, DNS, what's DNS? And then looking up what DNS is, you're not really gonna learn much. So I recommend that as you go through the instructions for these three projects, you look up every single term, you write it down, and you make sure you understand what these projects are doing exactly. Yeah, just following the instructions doesn't teach you a whole lot. Uh, I also recommend writing down everything you do. Uh, this is gonna give you a good record of the projects that you've done, kind of an example of your work. Uh, you wanna document every issue you run into, and then you wanna publish this online in Markdown on your GitHub. This will be really impressive to employers so that they can see an example of your writing and the projects that you've done. Doing these projects obviously isn't gonna guarantee you a job, but it will guarantee you some applicable skills and some hands-on experience. Now, I recommend to anybody who's trying to get started in information security to get started in information technology, that's IT. So entry-level InfoSec jobs are IT jobs, help desk, sysadmin, things like that. Those are InfoSec jobs, cybersecurity jobs. And don't give up. If you're really interested in information security, uh, keep pushing. Somebody will give you a chance. Somebody will notice that uh, drive that you have, and they'll give you an opportunity. All right, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Uh, this has been Noah from the Security Metrics News. If you really enjoyed this type of content, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell for uh, notifications. Tell us what kind of projects uh, you've been working on in the comments. Uh, tell us what you think of this video and what kind of videos you want to see in the future. Thanks so much for watching and never have a false sense of security.